but specific to this work. Um, so though we did not use later, but insect uh, was one of the pieces where we had to apply controlled vocabulary and ontology. Right? We have some to, uh, you know, tools specific for our needs, um, you know, coming from Smart Logic. It's SEMA4, which helps us to integrate the ontology into the system. And then future data, we will not be having any problem, such problem. At least we'll, we'll be able to minimize the problem, right? So, and then as I said, like some sort of normalization of the data had done in the background, right? We, we had a lot of insect values. They are sometimes in thousands, sometimes they are in point decimals and so on. So we normalized based on the overall impact of that protein um, to, to different classes or different classes of insects. So they get zero to five different classes, right? <clears throat> and uh, I already explained during the process itself uh, for, we have also done, uh, you know, ML work for other pieces where we had a lot of features, right? In this case, the feature was only one. That's uh, the sequence, right? How, and I also explained to you how did we uh, overcome that, right? And uh, once you use that, now you are generating too many features. That's another challenge, right? So, but what would we apply in addition to looking at, say, variable importance, which is, you know, like in various methods, um, is that your domain knowledge, right? Whether uh, if I look at the sequence nature of, um, you know, nature of these amino acids within the sequence, if this is a physiochemical property, this needs to be like considered, right? That is the domain information. And then um, one of the important factors in uh, model management is that how can you integrate different programming languages, right? Our group is like extensively using R programming and this, this is a Python toolkit, right? And uh, so what we did for that, uh, we extracted all the features using Python, but then training, validation and building dashboards, all this piece was taken care, even data cleaning was taken care using by R programming. And uh, heterogeneous skill level of uh, end users, I don't know whether it is same for all the domains, but definitely in biology, biotechnology companies. Um, so you build, of, of course, you are going to build this model, but how are you going to give the product to the end users, right? You cannot ask them to run it on cloud or run it, you know, um, you cannot do that, right? So somewhere it has to be, okay, just one click or do just some drop down selection and all. So. I mean, many of us, not only uh, we are doing it, I think even you, you might be doing this piece. We are building, uh, I mean, we built a dashboard which basically helps them to visualize and then take the decision, like for advancement decisions. Yes, protein A has to go for the next phase, protein B, no. And uh, model management, um, so in, compared to your, like probably many of you are coming from IT companies and different domains, maybe directly from the data science domain, uh, probably you might be the early adopters of some of these advanced technologies, right? But um, being an agriculture company, we may not be pacing up with the existing technologies. So, but we are, uh, you know, we have understood the value of the data and then we started, like we moved into AWS now last five years, right? So. Then after that, we started looking at, um, you know, how to run these uh, workflows, how to build the models and, um, you know, like the, on the cloud. So, um, so that is when, um, you know, uh, we started using Pachyderm. Now we are also having the, you know, the uh, SageMaker available as well. So, in, in, I mean, in future, we'll be also using all those things. And uh, I already explained to you why we used Pachyderm. So now uh, the... Um, so some of the learnings uh, in this is the data component basically. Um, so we had to do a lot of data cleaning data, um, you know, if you do not do, right? So as I said, we used only feature earlier and then we got almost nothing other than the traditional method outcome, right? In this case, we, uh, after cleaning the data, so we, we had, you know, good amount of, um, you know, the comparison we, we could do, we could identify the patterns in the data. So all those stuff. Right, that is one of the um, learnings and the other learnings is like, um, um, you know, like when you uh, generate a lot of features, what are different ways you can, uh, you know, select those features, important one. And uh, what we want to do next is that uh, we want to explore more descriptors. Basically, uh, this um, toolkit has a lot of, lot of other features which we want to extract, right? So one of the problems uh, we uh, have in that is it generates the columns just with A, B, C, D, uh, sometimes as a column header. Um, sometimes we are not, we are failing to identify what is this feature is about. But in some cases it gives the header a polarity, uh, you know, hydrophobicity, something like that, which we are very familiar with. So we are looking into the detailed scientific information 
of those um, you know the descriptors and uh, the second thing is recently i think just a few um, days back um, i feature was updated and uh, now we have a version called i learn on the github which also can be extended for dna sequences as well i think i don't know it can be also extended to any other sequences basically generally um, so wh wherever it is like continuously repeated right you can probably feed it generate the feature i don't know about that right so and then um, so what we want to do um, based on the customer input we did not consider the insect column but what we also see is that um, as i mentioned earlier different proteins are effective against different insects so can we now include those insects as a feature or a class of insect or order of insect as a feature so then um, identify those potential um, you know proteins which can kill at least those groups of uh, you know insects with more confidence we can tell those right so that's the next aspect we are going to do at. So now I'd like to leave it at uh, where else this, um, you know, this, this method can be used. Definitely wherever you are using the proteins, wherever you are studying about the proteins. Talk about, um, you know, uh, pharmaceutical health domain, you know, cases, because we all know that um, cancers, right, uh, diabetes and age related diseases, right, your Parkinson's or Alzheimer, Parkinson's like you would have seen the old people, you know, shivering the body and Alzheimer's, like the people forget, tend to forget after a certain age. All these are controlled by proteins. So, right, in the age people, uh, protein aggregates, that process is called protein aggregation, which leads to this process. And scientists are, have been studying different sequences, which can probably minimize these efforts, right? So, this study can be extensively used in that and also in the diabetes and the cancers. Do I have the time or like I'm done with five minutes? Okay, wonderful. Yeah, so, and then um, agriculture, not only I talked about developing the uh, insect resistant plants, right? So now you have identified, um, you, you are going to, you know, suggest to the uh, scientists, so they will take it forward, of course, right? So that that's, that's there, but uh, you want to develop plants resistant to different things, like maybe drought uh, or more water, more shade, right? We have all those products, right? So can we apply this for other studies as well? That is like we are thinking um, in-house as well as even like anybody working on plant science um, should be able to use. And also like many bioinformatical studies, right? Many IT companies also do a lot of bioinformatics. So it is definitely useful there if you have to come up with say some uh, medicine, um, you know, if you are working with some health domains where you want to suggest uh, what should be the target. You know, you are developing a drug, what should be the target? The sequence target right so that's that's the place so that's it i wanted to share so if, if you have any questions for me okay thank you vasu for this uh, very interesting presentation can we have a round of applause for the speaker please <laughs> questions It's the last talk of the day, but any questions? <laughs> okay, uh, there's one question here and then one question here. Given the bio diverse uh, nature of biology, uh, you are recommending a set of proteins uh, to the scientists. But do we have any real true positive which can be actually taken forward uh, with many other features can be actually incorporated in your method as you mentioned as insect classes as uh, further descriptors can be included. Right. So likewise, on what basis to that, there must be some benchmark. Do we have a real true positives which yes. is validated by the experiments as such? Yeah. yeah, I think very, very good question indeed. So we do have a lot of controls included in this. When I say controls, there are positive controls, there are negative controls. So we already, the, the, that label data, we know that which proteins are performing, um, you know, highly efficiently in the in-house. We have the biological proof for that. We have been using that as a product. We have those products in the pipeline, uh, you know, in the public as a commercial product, right? So that we have included. Uh, and also we do have a lot of, um, you know, the proteins which are not performing at all. So we, we have taken care of that. Um, yesterday's session, uh, Chris mentioned about uh, selection bias. So uh, I think this is somewhat similar to the problem that he was trying to address uh, in the sense that whenever we continue to 
like make selection according to some prediction that we have made and we select only those which are according to that uh, prediction right in that sense we are uh, so if there are some values which are true negatives oh, right. i'm sorry I'm, the, the, the which are predicted to be false but they are actually true yeah uh, those are the cases which eventually get ignored so is there anything that uh, that compensates for that in your model okay so i think it's a question related to feature engineering basically right so you have the features and you have built a model right so based on the performance of the model like when you look at your um, confusion matrix so it all starts from the data you have so in this case one thing i did not mention is about the data bias also which we took care of by you know different methods using those different methods so um, in this case one one point is that we had, as i said like we have both components like um, you know the it, it is supposed to be active but we are predicting it as inactive the vice versa right so that uh, we can fine tune that right depending on the feature you are you are probably feeding it in there um, or the data you are feeding it in there but it all depends on the what customers basically want the feature engineering part uh, we can do it probably uh, once we realize that you know uh, some of these features are probably not contributing at all so as i said there are many more features uh, only by exploring those we should be able to probably know that piece yeah answers your question the the question was more about so in the in the the predicted to be false but they are actually effective those proteins yeah so as we go on sampling from uh, get go on making experiments based on our uh, predicted results we are act, act, actually ignore those values so we don't actually make experiments with those which are not predicted by the model yeah maybe you want to answer um we just uh, like uh, i if i understood your question right i think you know um we are asking that uh, what if a model predicts it right and then if it's uh, model predicts it active but then it's still inactive and then we are still uh, pushing it to the training data and training it again with the same data right so or to do that we are actually uh, uh, we are running the models in the lab uh, lab along with the, we are continuing the biological process as well so that's how we are validating and we are actually validating the models correctness uh, before we push it to the production so uh, we'll make sure uh, you know before we push it to the production we'll make sure if the model is uh, uh, highly accurate in you know reducing either the true positives or false negatives right so we make sure and then we'll push it to the that's the only way we can uh, improve that uh, yeah we will we, we'll be uh, before we push it to the production we'll be testing a biological process as well as model testing yeah i mean as i indirectly said like it is it depends on how you need it at the end yeah there there will be bias definitely like when you start tuning those uh, the values you are looking at right so definitely that's expected to happen right so any other questions Okay if not uh, thanks a lot vasu uh, and this brings us to a close to this edition of the fifth elephant uh, thank you everybody for staying uh, with us uh, through the two days of the conference